All right, so it's time for everybody's favorite uh, debate section. Yeah. Uh, we get to hear us go back and forth real quick. So, what is the uh, resolution? Um, yes. So, oh, yeah, last time we didn't do a resolution. Yeah. That's improper to, to the point where it's an assault. <laughs> but, um, so, so basically, the resolution is a statement that we're going to disagree about because asking a question in a debate, if you really do debate, right, if you know debate theory, does not make sense. So, we're gonna, I'm going to give you my statement. And then he's just going to contradict. Very simple. The resolution is resolved. Corporate Black Lives Matter statements are indicative of substantive change. And let me get into three reasons why I believe this is true. First, it's a clear marker of progress, right? Regardless of whether or not Nike, the NFL, Cinemark, who's dead anyway. <laughs> um, so, it's good. Yeah. so, you know, it's COVID is doing its thing. Yeah. So... Regardless of whether or not they actually think my black lives matters, or my black lives matters, yeah, they are saying it, and they wouldn't do that yesterday, and that means so much. Either the public pressure is enough, either the BLM movement is enough, something is enough to make them affirm black life, which in America, shockingly enough, is uh, is new, and so that's that that speaks volumes, right? Our our, our society is moving forward, and we forced it to do. Uh, secondly, is that uh, companies are actually changing policies, uh, the way they operate, the products they make, and, and how they price them, things of that nature. Prime example, and uh, I'll refer to uh, the genius work of Tyler Oklahoma. You may have known him as Tyler the Creator. Back when his work was a lot less respectable, <laughs> uh, he had an adult swim show, did pranks and sketches. One of the sketches was Negro strips, and uh, skaters and those kids who play outside are very well aware of the the. Uh, mind-boggling revelation that <laughs> band-aids were made for to be skin color. Yeah. I did not understand that. Uh, I just thought beige was the color of bandage. <laughs> so uh, now band-aid is like, oh, we need to make Negro strips like Todd the Creator. Yes, of course. And they got all these different shades. And so that is a, you know, that is new. That is something now that when a black child scrubs his knee at school, the teacher hopefully has Negro strips <laughs> ready to place on his knee. Did I call Negro strips? <laughs> just call band uh, Yeah, yeah. I just I like this. Game. <laughs> um, um, a huge win uh, that links into the first argument is that with all these statements being made, now there is accountability, or at least uh, the possibility thereof. America is held accountable, unlike most, the vast majority of other states, uh, due to its very high, lofty <laughs> ideals uh, written into the Constitution. So if not for the words of Thomas Jefferson, uh, then we wouldn't be able to say that black lives ought to matter just as much as anyone else. Because if all men were not created equal, uh, or not, yeah, um, yeah um, <laughs> if all men were not created equal according to the Constitution, we'd have a big problem. And if we weren't made, uh, able to make these amendments, we'd have a big problem. So they made amendments, right? All these, the NFL, Roger Goodell made an amendment, and so now. We at least have something to say. You said that you were going to do it. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe Black Lives Matter. And I, uh, I'm going to pressure you to, to hold to, to what you said as opposed to pressuring you to hold you what I want you to do. Right. Yeah. All right, so my uh, <laughs> kind of argument, right? So again, this is uh, educational, but allow me to warm up. First thing, Roger Goodell in the NFL. Um, no, uh, <laughs> basically. So I think we many times think of capitalism, um, we think of it as a way that Adam Smith um, uh, yeah. conjured up the idea of a free market society, right? And the hand of the market, right? Um, the invisible hand of the market. The version of capitalism that America has is very much preserved in a ugly incest child that does not resemble, resemble what Adam Smith had in mind. Yeah. And why that is important, why I make the distinction is because the concept of accountability, that I can hold said business accountable for not doing uh, the actions that they're going to do, is just a concept and not uh, actors I actually work um, uh, when we get to the meet. Uh, when the rubber meets the rope, right? So we are still going to watch football on Sunday. Whether or not Colin Kaepernick gets a job, whether or not uh, the NFL starts to treat his players better, 
we're still going to watch football on Sunday. And the way we know that is when the NFL has let its players get concussions and die or commit suicide for years on end, and I am still going to tune in on Sunday to watch football. So that is one issue. Secondly, we knew since the 90s that Nike had sweatshops, but I still got forces on my feet right now, right? So I think uh, we talk about accountability, but it's just um, the, the engine that is uh, capitalism just continues to move unless there is uh, someone with enough power to start breaking it, like a Teddy Roosevelt who broke up big business during uh, the end of the Gilded Age, right? Uh, the regular consumer doesn't have that type of power as much as we think they do, right? Uh, secondly, we talk, uh, your, your point about uh, the statements being uh, a sign of substance change, right? It's like the statement, them saying the statement itself being a change. I don't think it shows a change. I think it just, it's pandering to me, right? So um, they know we want to hear it. And if maybe I'll say it and you'll shut up, right? So just saying Black Lives Matter didn't like hurt Roger Goodell to say that. It didn't hurt Nike to post it, right? And the people who have been fighting against it, um, is, it doesn't make any sense, right? So the Knicks like didn't want to say Black Lives Matter. And that just was dumb because the Rockets wrote up a little statement and then they said Black Lives Matter. And well, yeah, we're all here for the Rockets. And then we forget that they almost fired uh, Daryl Morey over coming out in support of the Hong Kong yeah, yeah, yeah. protests, right? So um, it was just a statement and I can say anything, right? I can say anything in support of anybody and I don't really have to mean it, right? And I also think policy changes um, are the bare minimum, right? So. Uh, Band-Aid making black people band-aids, or band-aids that death cover black people's flesh, right? That's cool, right? Yeah. But who's on the board of Band-Aid's corporation, right? How easy is it to move up in the organizational structure, right? So, um, you, them changing the band-aid color means nothing to me. I want to see organizational change, right? And so, the counter-argument to that is going to be, well, you can have accountability, but I just destroy that and I deal with accountability is a myth because they could do what they wanted to do. I said destroy. Yeah. <laughs> Not just destroy. Yeah. yeah. With facts and logic. <laughs> yes. I'm dead. Okay, so you know, as I close, because there ain't, there ain't a whole lot to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna just shut it down. <laughs> uh, there's an arc that goes through this this series, right? That, that we've been recording uh, in this session, this uh, installment, is that. Um, Progress has been made, it's really true. I think honestly the fact, like the fact that for every student's max march seven miles in the Texas heat, uh, the fact that uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, it has this resurgence and is now uh, more, has a higher approval rating than the President of the United States. Black Lives Matter. That's not hard. Has a higher approval rating than the President of the United States, right? A duly elected, well, duly elected President of the United States, more popular than him. And That's then, not hard. I don't think it's, it's not hard. <laughs> major corporations, Fortune 500, the ones you see on the stock exchange, uh, are uh, uh, giving Black Lives Matter statements. These are not revolutionary happenings. No, who's going to argue that, right? They're not radical, uh, but they are indicative. The resolution is important. <laughs> they are indicative of substantive change. Give me that. And I think, I think uh, as we push for more, always push for more, never settle black people uh, or anybody. Uh, you know, be hungry, want the equality. I'm, I am a man, but you know, when I get a crumb, eat the crumb. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not gonna be satisfied. I want a whole loaf, but I mean, I'm not gonna die because I don't want the crumb. Like, come on, doc. Yeah, I eat the crumb and then, you know, give, give me some more. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. I can, yeah, I, I understand, because like, NASCAR, like, getting rid of Confederate flag and allowing it to happen, right? That is a step in the right direction, but I come back to the fact that the people who are gonna go see NASCAR races, right? Not the vast majority of them, but still enough of a subset of the population that it's still gonna be a hostile environment, right? You may have taken away their flag, but they're still gonna have the same um, feelings, right? And then and when it comes to the NFL, right, well, I'm saying, I can come back to the same conclusion, that Roger Dill may say Black Lives Matter, but like Con Capital loss is prime. Every they also pay the millions of dollars and anybody can kneel at any time. Yeah, but I mean, 
we're going to have a problem when it comes to September when Jerry Jones tells the Cowboys to go play football and I don't care about COVID. Call of Duty. <laughs> People booted up the game. White boys booted up the game and was mad. Yeah, so um, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think you know, you know, if I had to give my true feelings, yes, I think we are heading in the right direction. I think accountability is going to have to be strong. I think we're going to have to make some tough choices. You know, I saw some some new Jordans that I want. I may have to hold back on that purchase so I can make sure that you know the goat holds up his end of the deal. You know, uh, I think those things would be important. I think you know, I think we can speak with our wallets. I think if we start speaking with our wallets, people are going to change. You know, HEB gave a thousand water bottles to Prairie, right? They gave. Uh I of a million to uh, the institution of Prairie View University. Yeah, uh, and they gave Charles, no, excuse me, Charles Butt, the founder of HEB, yeah. gave out of his personal money to Prairie View and University to a program that contributes to the larger African American Studies program. Right. So, like, it was very much like black people for you because yeah. uh, you know I kind of sat around waiting on that first. Yeah, and so um, you know HEB will be seeing my dollar soon, right? So those things are important, you know. H-E-B is a grocery store in Southeast Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Texas, yeah. Uh, so I, you can vote with your, with your dollar. I think those things are important. So um, as you come to the close, right? Um, for Black Lives Matter, I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, for the policy changes, I think we're going to get back into um, with the podcast called The Weeds. I'm going to say the weeds of, uh, of the policy. Uh, tweak it and then roll it back out with some real hard numbers for politicians. The politicians are stupid, just need to hand the policy and they can uh, work it. And when it comes to corporations, I think, you know, this is looking up, but I think we need to make some, uh, we need to make sure we hold people accountable and make sure they, you know, five years from now, do they hold up to what they say they want to say. Word. Uh, so my name is Antonio Brown. Urban Bryant. This is Relative Conscious. Where we're kind of woke. Just kind of. <laughs>